Hello and welcome to the Residence Forum here at Alconbury Weald. I'm the Community Development Lead and I'm here with Rebecca Britton. Today we're having a virtual forum. There will be the opportunity to email in questions at the end. We'll have a live Q&A. The email address is info at alconbury-weald.co.uk. Please send in any requests and we'll have a look and see if we can answer them all. We're going to have... Um, Becca's going to go through an update in a moment. Urban and Civic have teamed up with Home Start Cambridgeshire. It's re we're really excited about this. It's a really good m marriage of um, partners. They're a national charity who help um, families who are struggling or need just need a bit of support. Young families uh, up to the age of five they support. Um, there'll be more information in the Warbler in the October version. But if, you, if you'd like to volunteer for them, or if you'd like, need, think you need, might need support, you can always email me or have a look in the Warbler. Becca's now going to go through um, some details of things that are happening on site. Thanks very much, Natalie. So yes, it's been, uh, as we all know, quite an interesting and challenging few weeks and months um, since we last spoke, and uh, it's a shame that we can't be meeting together to do this forum live, but we want to make sure that we keep good information flow about what's happening on site. Um, so as ever, we start with our trusty map, a um, bit of just uh, navigation to make sure you know where we are on things. So G uh, and J are the primary school, Ermine Street Church Academy and the community park. And just to give you a very quick update on things, and you're all familiar, uh, one is the Hopkins parcel, which is pretty much all complete now, and Morris and Red Row are two and three. Um, so just to give you an update on some of the other areas um, of the development, Civic Living uh, parcel four is almost complete now, and the next um, aspects that you'll see coming into planning for homes coming forward is likely to be parcel 4A, uh, which I think we mentioned in the last forum as um, homes that are being taken forward by Campbell Buchanan. Um, so we are hoping they will be able to do some uh, presentation, have some material coming out over the next few months and get a planning application probably for that parcel in by Christmas. We're pleased to see the progress that Hopkins are making on parcel five. Uh, I think they are going to be going on sale in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and also Crest Nicholson uh, working away in uh, parcel six. And it's great that we've got some Crest residents um, joining us at Alconbury Weald. Just in terms of the next steps and the next parcels coming forward, uh, we're currently in conversation with a number of house builders around parcel seven and eight. And the planning application that went in last year for the key phase one extension to include the secondary school is very now close to uh, getting full consent. So area Q on the map here is the secondary school campus, which also have the special needs school and nine and 10 are the next housing parcels. It's great to see that we do have continued interest from the house builders that we're working with and some new house builders as well, uh, very keen to come and be part of the Alconbury World development. And so we'll be keeping you posted on new homes coming forward and the new neighbors that you'll be getting in the next few years. As part of progress, um, with the uh, space coming forward also to support residents. Hopefully you'll have seen the new community centre coming forward. Uh, we've got a great delivery team there with the local contractor Coulsons um, who are working away on the community um, pavilion. And we'll just move forward the slide so you can see that. Uh, so this is the first building that will ha be bespoke for the community. Essentially it's your space. So there'll be meeting rooms, there'll be a uh, pavilion space for the cricket pitch, uh, and we're also talking to our health partners in the surgery around the potential for health um, support uh, within the physio rooms coming forwards. And that will also be uh, an office where you can get hold of Natalie. Um, so planning permission received, contractor started August, and that building should be up and running um, spring 2021. Last time we spoke, uh, we gave you an update on the convenience store and the nursery. And so I'm pleased to say good conversations continuing with co-op and also with Mother Goose um, as part of bringing forward the next nursery for the development. Um, we have been reflecting on the feedback we had from residents around the potential impact of that location for co-op. If you remember 
uh, we were looking at the little uh, T uh, grey box uh, on the map there as a potential location. Um, we're now reconsidering that on the back of some of the feedback and talking through with co-op and the nursery and we're potentially looking at some space coming forward just where you can see the grey uh, block marked N. So this would move it further into the site but also mean it's uh, a better layout really for getting people accessing it safely on, on bikes, on foot, uh, and also being able to manage those who, who want to go in the car, uh, we can sort of manage it slightly better. We have got a lot more design work to do on this, so we're probably a, a few weeks away from being able to show more detailed plans, but we just wanted to put it on your radars really that we will be coming out with some more detailed plans moving forward. The Glade is a really exciting part um, of the vision coming forward. So we're, one of the things we're working away on is making sure that um, moving the buildings uh, closer into the Glade doesn't impact too much on the green space and potentially looking at how we can bring extra green space behind that so that we don't decrease uh, what's in the Glade. But what we hope is in bringing the, uh, the shop there, the potential for the pub coming forward there, um, as well as the nursery, uh, that that really energises that as a hub within the first phase. So alongside the school and Swinford stores and the park um, to one side of the first phase of the development, you've also got this hub on this side which sits around the watch office, the cricket green uh, and enables some more facilities and amenities to come forward. So we're working away on that plan. We've got some uh, illustrations starting to develop. We've got a bit more work to do on the way some of the parking and access works. Uh, and as soon as we have those detailed plans, we will come and share. But we really hope that we'll get an application in by the end of this year. So hopefully October, um, November, we will come back and have a conversation. Hopefully we'll be able to do that in, in person. Uh, but if not, we'll make sure that there's a good um, online package and some videos and that we can go through that explain what we'd like to do and get your views and make sure that this is the right hub coming forward. So um, just moving on as well to the other, uh, the other side, just north of the primary school uh, at the, uh, the top of the Red Row area. Um, I mentioned that we're moving forward with um, the consent for the secondary school area coming forward. It's very exciting. With that, we've now got a design team in place that are starting to work up some of the plans for the secondary school. Before we can take any of that forward, we need to uh, take forward the, dem the demolition work that we mentioned previously. So this will be removing the buildings that are there uh, and there's quite a lot of little bits of infrastructure um, to do with the military use previously. So there's a few fuel tanks and things that need to be removed. There's probably two key phases to the demolition. The first is not too noisy. Um, there'll be a few thuds and bangs as bits of building come down, but nothing hopefully too painful. The second phase is a little um, more uncomfortable because it will be peckering out some of the hard standing and we're working with the contractors at the moment on how we can minimise the impact. So at the moment, it's just the first phase we're talking about, which is um, dropping those buildings. And we have produced a little information um, booklet, which we'd mentioned previously is in the library. Um, but this demolition will be done uh, in the way we always like to do things, fully sustainable. Uh, so we'll be using recycling and uh, chunking out most of the demo materials on site and using them in the next stage of development. Um, we've working closely with the contractors at the moment, so we do have working hours shown on, on the slide here, 7.30 to 6, Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 1 on Saturdays. Uh, they absolutely are committed to ensuring nothing too noisy happens before 8.30 or after 5. So as long as we can keep the schedule, we'll really try and minimise uh, the time frame where any noise is happening. And we're very happy to do a bit more uh, information and detail to the residents who are closest to that area. So please do get in touch with Natalie if you want any more information on that. Um, and there's a little um, uh, summary of the information sheet that's available on the library. Um, and again, we can have hard copies available. If that's and helpful. just as a, an extra to that, I've been in contact with the construction team today and they're looking to start bringing down the buildings on Monday. So Monday's the, the day, so. You might hear a few bangs. <laughs> um, hopefully nothing, nothing too much and do keep us posted if, if anything becomes a problem or difficult on that. 
And just a reminder as well, we are taking questions at the end of this session, so please email in info at alconbury-wheel.co.uk. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit of an update on transport. Um, we have been speaking at different times around the Southern Gateway coming forward. So this is the entrance to the site that effectively is right down the end of the runway uh, across Grange Farm and would come out directly onto the A141 to uh, just north of Huntingdon. Uh, it's something we've been very keen to progress for a while. We've had a planning application in. Um, to get the junction and the road and cycle and bus uh, connections into the south of the site. We are moving forward with that. There is quite a big piece of work that the Combined Authority and the County Council are taking forward around the A141. Um, and we're just making sure that the plans um, work together with that. Uh, so there has been a bit of a delay in getting progress, but consent is imminent. Um, and we are gearing up at the moment to, as soon as we do get consent, to be able to move that forward. It will be a significantly less bumpy cycle uh, than going down Ermine Street uh, and quicker as well for, um, for, for cars and buses. So we hope that will be um, a big part of starting to bring forward both the, the secondary school site and that area north of Red Row, um, as well as to connect us up more broadly into the local uh, transport infrastructure. And linking on from that, uh, we have mentioned the shuttle bus a number of times. With COVID, all of the bus um, services locally have taken a real hit. And so we've been working hard with the County Council and with Jews um, uh, coaches who will be the provider of the service to develop uh, a service that basically works in tandem with the guided busway B. So that's an hourly service that um, uh, supports Alconbury World uh, and connects us to Huntingdon and Styles and Cambridge and Peterborough to the north. The shuttle bus service will connect a more local route to Alconbury Western and Alconbury Village, uh, Alconbury Weald and the Stukeleys, and then connect down into Huntingdon Town Centre and the rail and bus station. So that will be uh, uh, one an hour um, working uh, with the busway B, so effectively one almost every half hour. And it will also be an earlier service start. Um, and we're looking at introducing both more evening services and Sunday services as well. So we're just working through at the moment when we will start, making sure everything is COVID compliant. Um, but we will hopefully be starting at some point, either in the new year or just after that, and we will keep you posted on that. We might well add some questions about buses into our annual travel survey, which we'll be doing, uh, taking forward with yourselves in October. Uh, so please do uh, come back with any thoughts on the times that you would use a bus service at the locations you want to go to, because it is genuinely helping to inform the way that this service comes forward uh, and how it can best connect you to where you want to go to hopefully without using your cars. And just finally from me, then I'll hand over back to Natalie. Um, you may well remember the huge amount of paperwork you signed um, when you moved into your new home. Uh, part of that included the estate management deed and transfer. Uh, we're now coming up to one of our five year review periods. So the uh, service charge was fixed at a 2015 rate. And then every five years it is reviewed to make sure it is in line with inflation and any increased costs. The estate management charge uh, is a contribution that each household makes that enables us to ensure the play areas are delivered, remain safe and well maintained, and also to look after the public realm areas, uh, the community green space uh, and all of the walkways and connections. A lot of this also uh, supports the biodiversity and ecology management plans that we have in place, including making sure that the wildflower areas and, and uh, other bat um, forests and all of the things that we do on our ecology side of things are also well maintained to ensure the site delivers biodiversity net gain. So we're now reaching a point where those costs will go up slightly. You'll be getting a full letter around uh, this. We're just working out the costs at the moment with Encore. It is likely to be an increase in the region of about £30. Um, and so that will come out in the letters that come out to you in October. And that will then be fixed for another five years 
uh, so will be fixed until the 2025 review. Hopefully um, you'll understand from the different conversations we've had previously that um, this is a contribution from um, each household. There is a significant subsidy which uh, uh, comes from Urban and Civic uh, until the point where we have almost full completion of the development, at which point the estate charge actually does uh, reach its costs. Um, but we're really happy to talk to anybody who has any concerns or questions about the estate charge uh, and also Encore will be able to follow up any queries you have when the letter comes out next month. And now back over to Natalie. So I'd like to talk about um, setting up a community association. Um, I've been researching right from back in the beginning of this year of um, how we as a community work together um, to make things happen on site. Um, one of the first things that we did that I looked at was actually the food vans and at the moment these are these are basically decisions that we as a team make as to what comes on and I really feel that as a community we need to be making these sorts of decisions. Um, we also need to have a look at, sorry Becky, you move on, thank you. <laughs> we also need to have a look at what events happen as well. At the moment, um, we as a team set up most of the, all the events on site. When I've looked at um, other developments, it's very much more of a, a grassroots, um, people organise their own events and it's far more of an organic process. And I'd really like, and it, it creates community spirit and I'd really, really like to sort of explore that. Um, we've also had a few issues on site, uh, I'm sure everyone is aware. Um, I, in comparison to a lot of other sites, I think ours have been fair, very low level. Um, they've been looking, I've been looking at um, other areas and they've had far more issues than we have had. But it doesn't mean to say that they're not significant to us, um, it's more that we need to work as a community to decide what it is we're going to do about these things. Um, I've been in contact with um, the local PCSO. Do we want to set up a neighbourhood watch? You know, um, I've been talking also to um, uh, the team who uh, do planning. You know, what can we put into our development that will make it so, it, so that we do feel safe? Because I want to feel safe wandering around and I know everyone else does. So as a community, I think we need, I would like to explore a, a community association. If you would like to be part of this, then please, please, please get in contact with me. Um, I'd really like to move that um, sort of conversation onwards. Um, we've had a, a proposal from the Cambridge County Council um, about building solar carports. Um, over the car park in the new Civic Hub building. That's going to go into uh, a planning application for that is going to happen in, a, in about six weeks, I think. Uh, you've still got a, a couple of seconds left to send in any emails. Please send them into info at alconbury-wheel.co.uk um, and we'll go through those. So we've had um, lots of questions, so we'll get started. Um, so the first question is, when will the Senlis Road um, open, the part between Morris and Red Row? Um, I think if you could see the site from above, you would see that at the moment that is currently the Hall Road for the, between the Morris and Red Row developments. Um, and there's the, you know, there's, it would be clear that you couldn't open it at the moment. Um, we're looking at about, I think, 18 months for those parcels to be completed and then we can continue Senlis Road all the way through. Um, is there anything else on that? No, that no? sounds okay. okay. Um, we've had an email about parking along Senlis Road as well, up by um, the Red Row. Um, I, it's, more, it's a consideration point, isn't it? I've actually had a quite a lot of conversations with people in the last two, three weeks about parking, about inconsiderate parking. Um, and this isn't just about visitors to the site. This is about residents not thinking about their neighbours and not uh, appreciating that actually being able to get out of your house when you need to go to work is important. And it's, ju it's just about, it's a consideration point. Um, 
obviously it um, also can, can be a bit dangerous if we're parking on roads that aren't designed for, for that kind of um, stationary traffic. Um, in terms of that section um, of road, we're waiting on um, Red Row to complete their uh, th some works on that. So once as soon as that's done, we will um, top that off and finish that road off. I'm sure you all, if anyone lives over in, in that part of the development, you'll see that um, Swinford Road has been completed recently. Uh, there's a small section at the bottom of Senlis Road. Um, just on the bend that isn't completed and that's because Red Row need access to that part, that area for the houses opposite um, and they will be, well, as soon as that those houses are completed that's when that area will be, um, be finished off. Um, we've had a uh, email, um, the Radmile Apartments, when will they have their name on them? They're the um, apartments by Civic Living, um, I'll get that sorted. Um, so um, watch this space, I'll, I'll, um, I'll organise that. Um, the, in terms of that area and the road names, um, they are currently with the contractor, so I was expecting road names to be there by now. Um, I had it organised before I went on holiday, um, but uh, we'll just wait, I, it's a couple of weeks away, it's not, it's not far, and then um, the roads by Civic Living will have um, road names on them. Um, uh, so, right, so we've had a couple of questions about poor driving. Um, this is down the boulevard, um, heavy goods vehicles using um, this as an e access in error. Becca, do you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is something we are aware of and working quite closely with um, both the businesses on site uh, on the enterprise zone and also uh, the contractors uh, and others who are using the HTV access. If we look at that first, um, I think with the changes to the A14 and the A1 connections, it has thrown up a few wobbles around the signage. So we are, uh, we've now got an agreed plan with Highways England uh, and with the County Council about additional signs going up on the main roads and then how that relates to additional signage going on the local roads. That should mean it is more straightforward uh, for HGVs to find their way to the HGV entrance. Um, and on the back of that, we've also got maps and different language versions, um, which will be going to all of the businesses on site on the Enterprise Zone uh, and also to the contractors. So hopefully that will resolve uh, a, an element of that. Um, it is always a little bit of a, of a, war, on, a war of attrition. Um, not all drivers read the signs that um, are put up. So we'll just have to keep working on that, but we do monitor it on a regular basis. Um, and the same with the driving down the boulevard. Um, we do have an issue of a little bit of speeding going on there, uh, and also occasionally people going the wrong way uh, where they get confused about the signs. So similarly, we've got some maps and work going on with um, the core businesses who use that as a main access point. Um, and we do continue to monitor the situation. Fortunately, our offices are right above the junction and the corner there, um, so we do see it quite a lot. We have put in additional signage on the back of this being a bit of an issue earlier um, uh, at the end of last year uh, and monitoring it, and we have got some additional measures we could put in place on the back of that. So we will take that away and talk to our engineering team um, and keep an eye on it and also make sure that the, the maps and the warnings that go out hopefully just increase people's awareness and again get more consideration um, as to driving a bit more carefully and following the signs. Lovely. Um, I, I'm also um, having a look at mate, looking at what we can, else we can do actually on the boulevard about the speeding. Um, I've been in contact with people about maybe putting um, a speed monitor so people can see how fast they're going and that actually it all sort of flat, you know, the, the one that flashes red when you're um, not speeding well and a, a happy smiley face if you're doing an, a, a correct, the, a good speed. So um, I'm just moving with that at the moment, see how feasible that is. Um, we've had a question about the pub. Do you, Becca, do you want to take pubs forward? Yes, I always want to take pubs <laughs> forward, absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, earlier on when we were uh, outlining the Glade and the hub that's coming forward in the Glade, there is a building there that uh, has always been we want to bring forwards there for the pub. Um, 
have to say the background of a global pandemic and the lockdown has not been the best period in which to have conversations with um, pub providers. We are looking not to have a main chain there, but to, to have some form of uh, a local provider or free house, um, but that is proving slightly difficult at the moment. So at the moment we have broad location, some early design work that we did. We have some names in the hat of people we've been talking about. Um, we have just allowed the sector and the industry to just um, recover from what's going on at the moment. Uh, so while we're having different conversations around uh, the cafe opening and, and re-enlivening that and potentially looking at new hours for, for the cafe to enable um, some, some different provision of, uh, of alcohol and evening serving. Uh, at the moment, the pub is, is slightly delayed, um, not from the development side, but just because actually this is a tough time for pubs that are up and running at the moment, let alone to open up a new venture. So we will keep you posted on that. Uh, it is certainly something that is quite um, important to, uh, to all of the team here as something we know people want and we know it's something that, that we want to deliver. So it remains a priority um, and we will pursue it uh, as, as well as we can. But we do want to get the right provider as well. Um, so we will keep you posted on that and continue the conversations. Uh, we've had uh, several questions about allotments. Um, we're currently going through a process of checking that the people who have got the allotments still want them. Um, and then we're going to look at going through the reserve list um, and making sure that people get one, um, get one if, they, if they want one and that people are using them. So that is something that uh, it's something that's been going on for a couple, for quite a while. So um, we should have a an idea of, of where we are in a, in a couple of weeks' time. Um, we but it's fair to say we will have more allotments. We'll have more. Well, we'll have more forward. allotments. Yes, so yes, um, we'll have more allotments going give forward. Us a good idea. Of what else um, we need? Yeah. Um, we've had. Uh, when is the large civic centre expected to be completed? I think think if this is the civic hub that's um so the county council headquarters building um there's been a little bit of a delay due to covid but not huge so i think the latest that we had from them is that they hope that that will be um april or may um by the time it's fully completed um and so opening as soon as possible after that we, i think that's what we mean yeah. by the civic hub yeah. if not then we can if come it, back on clarify yeah. that and we'll come back if it's um, if we're talking about the co-op coming forward we're talking late next year aren't we uh yes that yeah. will be the plan we uh, i think we'll likely to be delivering bits of it from the summer um but i think the whole area to be completed is probably the end of next year okay uh sorry um right um when will construction on the train station begin and when will uh, and will it be built on the existing route out of Huntingdon um, and also another one similar um, update on the new link road to Huntingdon. Okay so I think it's probably useful if we can um, go back to the transport update slide um, which will hopefully give a bit of a uh, map that we can talk to. So uh, I mentioned earlier the Southern Gateway access is that link road that will connect from the south of the site down to the A141. Um, so that is imminent in terms of planning. It is then about nine to 12 months to deliver it. It's a long bit of road. You'd be surprised how long it is. Um, so there's a little bit of work done to do that. Um, we did some early archaeological trenching last year to sort of try and get ourselves in a good position to, to move that forward when uh, we did get planning. Um, so as soon as we uh, have appointed the contractors, we can be more specific on the dates, but we would certainly be hoping to be delivering that uh, as early as possible. So if we could get started um, in the winter, uh, we would hope that again, it will be delivered sort of by autumn, winter, the end of next year. Um, the station is an ongoing conversation really with the Department for Transport and Network Rail. Obviously there's been lots of other um, issues that they've been trying to resolve around HS2 and other elements and we're sort of in a bit of a queue at the moment on some of that. We picked up with the combined authority a couple of weeks ago um, the progress that, that they've been making also um, in wanting to prioritise Alcumbury World Rail Station 
Um, and so I think they are pretty confident that with Cambridge South now um, moving forward, um, with the rail station at, at SOA moving forward, uh, that queue is, we're getting there, we're, <laughs> moving, we're moving forward all the time. We've actually designed the station building, we've designed the car park, uh, we've even designed the shrubs and plants that go around the car park, so we are very eager to bring it in. Um, there are currently two options on the table with network rail, one of which is a station on the line, the other of which is what we call a turn back facility, so a little line that comes off that main East Coast main line route. And a lot of that um, discussion uh, relates to investment that they need to make further up the East Coast main line with four tracking or not. So there's quite a lot of technical discussion still going on about the scale of investment that would enable the rail station to come forward. And there's a bit of a gold or silver option around the Alconbury World Station, um, which we're part of those conversations with the Combined Authority, the County Council, Department for Transport and Network Rail. So I know it's frustrating. I feel like I'm always saying we're waiting. Um, it's always been a challenge with the railway station that it's not in our control to deliver it. Um, but we continue to work with partners uh, who still want to deliver it. It just will take a little bit more time. On the uh, alongside those conversations on the railway station, um, I'm sure you'll have seen the consultations recently about the Cambridge Autonomous Metro. Uh, the combined authority are uh, still very keen to prioritise our Cumbria world as part of the northern uh, section of the Cambridge Autonomous Metro and the A141 Southern Access, the railway station and the Cambridge Autonomous Metro links are all quite connected in the way that transport infrastructure comes together, which is why this map is quite useful to sort of see how these elements um, fit. So I think between the Southern Access and the CAM coming forward, where we've got a little bit more sense of the time scale, we hope that the railway station will come in as a core part of that and we continue to design around that. Uh, and we will just have to keep you posted as the conversations continue um, with the government uh, and with our local partners about the timing. So that's a bit long-winded. Yeah. <laughs> but happy to pick up with anyone individually uh, about more of the technical detail and, and also have our transport guys go through anything if, if that's helpful. Um, so um, are there any plans for a third incubator um, on site? I don't think so at the moment. It's more a case of if there was a demand, we would build it, but nothing at the moment. Is yeah, there? I mean, we... Uh, so we ha there, there is, um, we do have some plans for a third incubator that uh, would be brought forward uh, if there was demand, if there was a waiting list for the existing. Obviously, again, coronavirus is not necessarily the best backdrop um, to begin those conversations. The main uh, focus for the enterprise zone next stage, we have, uh, we're in fairly advanced talks with a, a, a large occupier coming forward. Um, and we're also in conversation with the combined authority and others, and we've actually just commissioned a bit of economic analysis around incubator space and supported space for startups in the background of the current um, challenges uh, and the way that the economy is going. So I think we always have the potential to bring forward another incubator. Um, we do actually have a couple of units um, that are currently vacant in the existing incubator, if anyone is interested in taking on that space. Um, and we're always working closely with um, both our agents, um, uh, uh, Savills and, um, and Barker Story Matthews, uh, and we'll have direct conversations as well with anybody who's interested in taking up space, either in the incubators or in a bespoke building. Um, the next stage of the Enterprise Zone will see lots of different types of commercial space coming forward. So you know, we're always happy to have a conversation and to uh, factor that into the plans. Um, and I think our final question at the moment, uh, we've had a question about uh, people not picking up uh, after their dogs. Um, actually, this is um, something that I get regular emails about, regular questions. Um, to be honest, this, I feel that this is a real, really a question that would be better going for, it would be a perfect question for the community association. Um, this is a behaviour point, it's about creating a culture where this is not acceptable. Um, I am going to put some extra signs up, I had them, um, uh, they went to printing this afternoon um, to put up around the parks and the more communal areas. Uh, but actually this is about us having pride in our area, 
Um, you know, we we I, I am very proud to work here. I'm very proud to walk around. I walk around um, a lot, and I don't want to see that. So, yeah, I think I feel like this is really a question for the community association. Um, so, if you've got any ideas of how we can change people's behaviours, uh, please let me know. Um, as opposed to, you know, it, 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 this is a conversation, so we we have need to have a think about um, about that. Uh, let me just check. There's nothing else. I can't see anything else coming through. Um, no, nothing else there. No, can't see anything else. So I think I think that's it. If there is any other questions that have come through on the back of what we went through earlier, um, then you know where we are. Uh, info at orkenbury-wheel.co.uk or give us a call. Um, whilst we've been working from home at different points during lockdown, we're all now back in the office yep. uh, and we're always at the end of our emails. So um, please do get in touch and we'll be thinking through how we do the next forum, <laughs> <laughs> depending on the guidance and where we are then. But thank you everybody for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, and this will be available as a, um, you'll be able to watch this again. So if anyone says that they've missed it, um, we'll, we'll pop it up there so you can watch this again. Right, thank you. Thanks ever so much.